Jesus. Okay, I'm getting ready to go. See, you know, be it. We're live. That's a good thing. I got on here just a couple of minutes earlier to make sure everybody can get on here and you can see me and uh, that it's live, right? And of course, right when I start, my dog starts barking, right? That's just how it goes. <laughs> I've got two little dogs. One barks all the time. One doesn't bark too often. But it never fails. <laughs> She's been really quiet until right now. Well, happy Sunday, guys. And I'm so glad that you're here. And I'm Vicki Jean with Vicki Jean Wilson Art, where I teach you art that you can be proud of. And usually it's painting. It's either acrylic painting or watercolor painting. And uh, today we are going to celebrate Easter a little early, but not too early. It'll be here before we know it. And we're doing the cross painting, the purple sacrifice painting right here. And uh, I'm glad you got to join. So let's wait just a couple of minutes to see if we get anybody else. It is beautiful here in southern Indiana. It's a beautiful day. And uh, usually when it's a pretty day, you know, people like to be outside. I do. I do. And uh, so I wasn't for sure how many we might get on here today, but hopefully uh, we have some. And, and of course, as always, though, you can always uh, check out the video on my page, Vicki Jean Wilson Art, and you can watch it later. A lot of people uh, kind of watch it now. Or when I do a live, uh, even in the membership that I have, uh, PJ's and Paintbrushes uh, Painting Membership, a lot of people like to watch it all the way through, and then they come back when they know they've got some time, or they know they won't get have any interruptions, and then they can uh, pause it and, and look at it and uh, rewind whatever they want to do, you know, and uh, be able to check it and uh, see each step and kind of go along with it better. So some will be painting today, and some might wait and paint later, right? And uh, that's the beauty of doing this, I think. And um, I love teaching others. I love teaching others how to paint, uh, whether it is acrylic or watercolor. I have painted for many years, and uh, I still enjoy doing it, right? I paint uh, for people for commissions, and I also teach others how to paint. So uh, I had done the Purple Sacrifice painting last year, last Easter. That was the first uh, Easter for it. And I had a few people that asked for it again. So uh, I thought, you know, why not? Why not? So I went ahead and hopefully if you needed the tracer, you picked up the tracer, which I'd had it on my page. But it is simple uh, to do on this one. Uh, so if you didn't get the tracer, hopefully you've already sketched it out. I've done a few videos this week, real quick videos, uh, telling you about the supplies, what paint you need, what brushes. But we're going to go over that real quick here just to make sure that you guys got your stuff. Because if nothing worse is to be painting and then you've got to go out in the shed or something and pick up a brush or something, I don't know. 
but we're going to do it today and we're going to do this painting in celebration of Easter, right? Easter means different things for different people and I know what it means for me uh, and that's why I created the painting Purple Sacrifice. Now, uh, in your monitor, like I mentioned before, it might look a little purple, it might look a little blue, but I am definitely using purple in mine. So, uh, everybody's might look a little different, and like I tell everybody, you go ahead and you paint, you're the artist, you paint it the way you would like it. I'm going to go uh, with you step by step to paint it like this, right? So, you should already have your traced out uh, tracer on here. Can you see that? I will do an overhead camera here in a few minutes. Uh, just a couple of minutes actually, but you should have your tracer already done already either on your mixed media pad, which is what this is or a Canvas or a piece of wood or whatever you've got around the house, right? Whatever you want to paint this on Now let me show you I'm going to go ahead and switch to the overhead camera here and uh, Make sure that you can see everything close up I'll get back with you later Okay, hopefully you can see the overhead. There is a little delay, so I want to make sure you can see uh, the painting right here, original uh, painting right there. So you can kind of look off of that as we're painting. Let me move things around here. And the paints that I have are these right here. So I have a purple. I have green, I have white, I have kind of a goldish yellow, I have dark brown, and I just got mine on a paper plate. Uh, I do have other palettes that I use, but I just splashed it on the paper plate today. The brushes that we will be using is a half inch flat brush, and you can tell this is well loved. This is one of my favorite brushes. <laughs> it's a little wild. Uh, I have a small round, if you have that, you might use it, you know, you might not. I'm just trying to give you some uh, ideas of brushes that you might want to use during this session. And then a liner brush. This makes smaller lines. It will be used probably along the grass, or maybe if you want to get a finer point right down here on the, uh, the cloth maybe at the top of the cross, I don't know, but I would I would at least try to get a couple of brushes. But like I said, I think in my first video, actually the painting, I did it all on the half inch brush. And you just kind of tilt it and get the corner of the brush. So if you only have this, that's great. You can still make it. I have my paper towels, always. I have my water basin to, uh, put my water in, of course, to clean out my brushes. And for just kicks and giggles here, at the center of my cross, now this is this is just optional, but after we get done completely painting everything, I added a little bit of sparkle gold. And I showed you, if you got a chance to look at the videos, I showed you three options here, and you might have some other options. This is a Stampedius, I think is the brand here. It's kind of a champagne color glitter. This will have to be used, and this one here will have to be used. Uh, this is in the uh, paper craft uh, uh, center area, you know, Michaels or Hobby Lobby or wherever you buy your art supplies. These two will have to be used with a clear glue. So what I mean by that, after you get completely done with your painting, it is completely dry. And you'll get some glue and you'll kind of dab around the cross wherever you want the glitter. These two will attach to that clear glue, right? Now another option, if you might have that, is these stickles. And see it comes with a uh, fine point here where you, it's like a paint, already glitter paint. And you just kind of dab or write or whatever you want with this. Uh, and you don't need the glue for that because it's already kind of in the solution and needs to stick. So those are optional, but it does add a little bit of pop here, guys. So uh, that's just something that you might want. 
So anyway, happy early Easter, everybody. And uh, we are going to uh, start painting. I'm going to get my position here. You're going to be able to, you should be able to see everything overhead. If I get it in the right area. I've got my paints over here too. Kind of move things around a little bit here. You've got your brushes ready to go. So when I start painting, I usually just take my brushes. I am going to move my water to the side because you don't really need to see that. And I'm going to dampen my brushes in my water, clean water, and just blot them on my paper towel. So they're just kind of ready to go, right? Now the first thing, if we are ready, we've got a few people on here today. Thank you for joining me again, guys. I appreciate it very much, and uh, I enjoy doing this. I am going to be doing some more, uh, too, uh, of uh, videos this month. And uh, so stay tuned on my page. If you're not part of my page, you need to uh, follow it so you get some more information, right? So the first thing we always do is the background. Some of my tutorials, we just kind of leave things white. But in today's case, we have got several colors of the background. Uh, the top right area is going to be the darkest of the dark. And I wanted to create that kind of just give an ominous kind of look. It's not dark, dark, but it's a deeper uh, purple shade. The left side here is very light, very light, uh, very light purple or a blue, actually, if you wanted to use a light blue. Down below this, on the bottom right, is the same. It's a light uh, color. And then the very bottom left here is a golden yellow, which I am using uh, this shade right here today. So... I believe last year when I painted this, I had a little bit different colors, so this year it might be uh, changed up just a little bit uh, of the colors I'm using, but it's still very similar. So what we're going to do is do a wash first, and what I mean by wash is you're going to add water to your paints. So when you, you already have your cross here, right, it's already sketched out. And I tell you what, can I don't know if you can see it. Let me take just a moment here and do it a little darker. I normally don't ask you, I only want you to sketch out just as dark. Or uh, you, you want to do it as light as you can. Not dark like this. I'm doing it dark for you so you can see what's going on here. So you can already see it better, I'm sure. At least on my monitor you can see it better so you can see what I'm doing but when you do it for yourself you don't want it really dark because sometimes the paint does not cover it right and you want to be able to cover these lines and here's my heel Okay, how we doing? Everybody got it now? You can see I bet better. Um, I hope the comments are working. You know, it's sometimes they don't. So I'm trying to see if I can see comments and guess what? I can't. I can't, guys. Uh, mm -mm. Let me real quick uh, pull, up, uh, pull it up on my phone. And that might be how I can see it. In case you guys are asking me, I hate to uh, not be able to see comments. Yes, okay, now we're going here. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Gay. Now we're on a roll, girls. Hey, guys, I don't know if there's any guys. Hi, Denise. Let me try to get this uh, to where you can see. I can see. I tell you guys, not until you do these things do you have any idea what it takes to get these going. <laughs> Sometimes they're, they've got a mind of their own. Okay, we're ready to go, and I can see comments now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and I'm sure you can see this better, too. What do you mean, why I can't use this feature right now? 
not fun. I don't know what that is. Can everybody still see me? I think so. I'm not sure what feature they're telling me that I can't uh, see, but uh, as long as you can see, that's okay. Okay, we've got it going. Got this. We're going to start on our background. The best way I think we're going to start, the first one is the light golden yellow color. If you notice on this one, it just kind of, on my painting, I've got it down here above the heel, and I've just got a slight golden color, and it only goes up to about the cross here, mid-cross. So a wash is taking your brush, basically, and you are pulling away a little bit of whatever color you're going to wash. And you're making a nice puddle. Of course, this is acrylic paint, right? So we are making a puddle right here. Can everybody still see me? I hope so, because I've got something showing that I'm, I'm not sure, in, sure what Facebook is meaning here. They always kind of trick me sometimes. So you want to make a nice puddle of paint. If it's too dark, still add a little bit of water. And all I'm doing is bringing my brush over and I'm making, you know, just more puddle of water. I'm taking my half inch brush and dipping into it. And then what I'm going to do is kind of go back and forth here. Can everybody see that? If it's too dark, I'm going to take a little water in my brush. I'm just going to thin it out. I'm going up to about halfway of my paper here. This is a mixed media pad that I'm using. Now, if you notice, I'm just going back and forth. All I'm doing is creating uh, just a background, just a background color so it's not just stark white. And I'm going back and forth, crisscrossing my brush so we don't have mainly, uh, I don't want any straight lines, you know. I'm just going to go back and forth. And like I said, if it's too dark, add some more water. If it's completely too dark for you, then take a paper towel and dampen it and start blotting it. Don't really rub, just kind of soften it and blot. And see how that lifts up some of that color? So that's a couple of different things that you can do, different ways you can do it. I'm not sure why they keep showing me something that says you can't use this feature right now, and I have no idea what feature it is. As long as you guys can see. Okay. Well, as long as you can see, that's fine. Okay, see how this is? Okay. So now what we're going to do, we are going to go ahead and move on up to this area up here, right above that golden color. And it is the very, very light purple. So we're going to create that. And we're doing it the same way. It's a wash. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to pull off a little bit of my purple. Now, purple is a stronger color. It's, it's more pigmented. So you do not want as much paint. You want probably a little bit more water. And like I said, this is going to probably be a little different color than what I had last year. But you're just softening, you're just kind of keeping it soft here. Go back and forth, back and forth. There's not really a right or wrong here. The cross is the main thing that you want to, uh, we want to address. But we are just creating a soft background. As you can see, you can probably see my gold color down here. You can see a little bit of my lighter color right up here. Okay. 
How are we doing? Joanne, thank you. Okay. My desktop is showing me something else than my phone is. It's not coming on my phone like that, so I'm not sure what they're what they're addressing, but as long as you guys can see it and we're still going, then that's that's the main thing, guys. Okay, we're going to do this top right a little darker. If you notice here on the painting. I have it a little darker right through here. Now, if you want to do a blue instead of a purple, you sure can. Like I said, even before, you can do that. But I, I'm doing a purple, and I'm still doing a wash, but I'm adding a little bit more paint to my wash. See how it's darker here now than it is on the left? And I'm just going back and forth, kind of blending it into... That softer section, softening it up. And if you need to take your towel and kind of blot where those two meet to soften it, go right ahead. You do have to work fairly quickly with this type of technique. This is just called a wash, and I do use it in several of my uh, paintings. I just do it differently. Sometimes I do it with a brush like we're doing today. Sometimes you can do it with a rag. You can just do it several different ways. Now I'm pulling it on down and as I'm pulling it down it's getting lighter. And then I'm going to stop. And the bottom part, the bottom right of the cross is the same as the top left. So see how light it is here? We're going to do it light right here. So you're going to add a little bit more water to that purple. And go ahead and pull that down. And it's just a soft color, very soft. Now, this is not completely, see how it's kind of uh, funny looking right there? I'm going to add a little bit more purple to this area. And you can too. Get it the way you want it. Get your background the way you want it right now. So if that means adding just a, a real quick layer to it while it's still damp and it'll blend together good, then go ahead and do that. That kind of helped that, in my opinion, that helped that some. Need to add a little bit more yellow to the bottom. Uh, let's do that now. All of these are washes. So you just add water to your paint. You know, it's like I've told people before, we're, we're just playing, guys. Paint is something that uh, you can always do again. Uh, it's not very expensive, especially this kind of paint uh, that we're using today. And uh, it's just a, it's a fun medium. You know, it's supposed to be that you can de-stress from it. Even though sometimes I do know it makes some people stressful. But I don't want that. I want you guys to have fun. I'm kind of getting a little bit in between the purple cloth. Kind of making sure I've got a background there. So look and see that you've got that kind of covered. You don't have any white showing. Not that that would be a bad thing, but you might want to make sure that... Uh, the, uh, there's a little opening there on the left hand side where the cloth comes down and I see when I uh, uh, drew this here this section 
I added that, and the original one does not have that, but you can add that if you want. Let me just erase that real quick. One thing about painting is, and one thing about sketching, guys, is when you sketch this out, that doesn't mean that you cannot paint it a little wider, you know, or a little longer. Um, when you get to where you're painting something, this is just a sketch. It's not in stone. And um, you can kind of rearrange that with your brush. And we will do that, especially with this cross. So meaning I have, and you have your template that you had. You might have already changed your template. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, it was just a quick template. And I, I shared with that uh, you with that on one of the videos. But just giving you an idea and just to help you a little bit. If you didn't use a template, you probably used a ruler, like I suggested. But even with the ruler, and even this here, it's got straight lines, right? I personally do not want my cross straight like that when I paint it. But right now, it's, it's perfect. It's fine for me because it gives me a guide. Uh, but when I paint it, I'm going to, and I'll show you here in a few minutes, I'm going to wiggle and jiggle my brush a little bit because in my mind, that cross... Uh, was not perfectly straight, right? It had a little bit of um, raw edges in it. It had some rough sides. It had different things in it. And that was that's how I want to paint mine. And if you notice here on uh, this, then you can see it's got some bumps. It's got some bruises. It's got some openings. It's got some dark areas. It's got some light areas. So it's, uh, it's variated in color. And that's how I want mine. Okay, guys. Now we have kind of waited on this to dry a little bit. Um, how are we doing? I wish I could get this thing off this monitor. <laughs> as long as you guys can see me, because my monitor is telling me that the page isn't available right now. So I'm hoping you guys can still... Yes, Deb, there will be a replay. Yes, that's okay. I hope you get to feeling better. I know it's hard with all the uh, the spring flowers blooming. They're gorgeous and beautiful, but oh gosh, sometimes allergies and all kinds of things. But uh, look on my page. It will be on my page. So, uh, and I will also upload this to my YouTube channel, and you will see that there too. So I'm hoping now everybody has your background. Okay, good. Thank you, Denise. I don't know why it's not showing up on my... <laughs> but anyway. Um, okay, thank you, Gay. So you should have your background by now. I hope it's fairly dry. You know, with a wash, it doesn't take as long to dry unless you just saturated it, you know. But even if you... Thank you, Cindy. Uh, it, even if you've got it uh, fairly wet or if you've over wet it just take you a dry paper towel and just kind of briefly kind of touch on it a little bit uh, you shouldn't have any problem with our cross if this was watercolor it'd be a completely different thing you know watercolors uh they just bleed together and they just do their own little magic but uh this won't be as bad so you do want your background a little bit uh, a little bit uh dry right I'm going to touch mine. I don't even know if you guys can see this. It's not even hard any color down here. So I'm kind of going over my wash just real quickly here at the bottom. Maybe some of you might need to do some of the same. Picking up little pieces of lint. Good way to pick up, if you get little pieces of lint, good way is to take your brush and kind of take the edge, the real corner of the edge, and just kind of lift it up. It's the best way I've found to pick up little pieces of lint. So, okay. Now maybe you can see that section a little bit better. We are going to start now, guys, on our cross. Yahoo! So, uh, grab you a, I got me some lemon water I'm drinking today. I was going to fix me some coffee, but I had coffee. Before church, I had coffee at church. I, I think I'm coffeeed out. So I haven't got water. It's better for me anyway, right? 
Okay, we're going to start on our cross. Now, if you notice on our cross, we have different shades. Basically, the two colors, honestly, that you're going to be using on this cross is the dark brown and a white. Now, this will be entirely up to you how you do this, but I'm going to show you how I, I did this one, of course. And as you can see, there's some darker areas, there's some lighter areas, there's some more darker areas here. And I do have a method to this madness, and I will show you why. So the first thing we're going to do is take our half inch brush right here, same one we've probably been using, and you're going to take, I've got paint going everywhere. This is why I don't use paper plates too often, guys, to be honest with you. I just don't. But uh, it's okay for a, a quick paint. Sometimes, and I just grab it really fast, and now I wish I would. <laughs> It'll work okay. I'll just have to drip off some of my some of my other paint here. Okay, I'm going to take my dark brown. Now this is a very dark brown, and I showed you that earlier in the video. So I'm going to actually make a wash out of this too. I'm pulling a little bit of the dark brown off to the side. I am adding some water. It is always best to start lighter. If you start too dark, you're going to wish you probably hadn't. So let's start, and I've got a wash of brown. And I'm going to paint, actually, the whole cross. Not, of course, the purple, not the robe. But I'm going to come down. I'm going to go right straight down. Now this is a wash. So it's a lighter brown, and I'm actually right now going right straight down. Just getting kind of the feel, kind of the shape of the cross. Going right up next to the purple material. Okay. And I went on down into, because it's not going to hurt anything right through here. You're going to go ahead and just kind of smooth that out and make that little heel a little bit later. So I did the vertical part of the cross. I'm going to take that same wash, load my half inch brush up again. I'm going to do the same thing going across, except I'm not going into the purple material, I'm going around it. Make sure that you have covered the top good. I mean, you don't have anything really uh, not coated. Back and forth, kind of smooth it out a little bit. Now this is a wash, so it's going to dry fairly, fairly quick. And the reason I had you do a wash first is because you can just get the shape. It's not too dark. And we're going to build upon that. I'm going to let this dry just a minute. I'm going to take it, and if you have a mixed mini pad, I just usually pick up one of the papers if you're painting on that and just kind of fluff it around a little bit, and that air will. It won't take long with a wash to dry. If you have a uh, hair dryer, you know, you can use that too. Just kind of zap it really quick and uh, just enough to kind of get it not too wet. Now this is going to be the trick of how you're going to create this cross the way it is. You want your final painting to look like this crossbar here is in front of the tall one, right? We want the horizontal wood to look like it's in front of the back. And in order to do that, you kind of have to trick the eye, right? Because right here, if you look at this, it all looks the same. But we have to, we're going from this step to this step in a matter of a few steps. 
So this is how we do that. So we've got a wash of the shape, right? We've got that. We've got our background help. Now we're going to start to add some dimension to this cross, which is the most, in my opinion, most important part of the, the painting, right? And how we're going to do that is, a, is by doing uh, variations of color of the dark brown right now. So here we go. You're going to take your half inch brush still and you're going to add a little bit more dark brown. It's not really a wash, but I've just got a little bit on my brush. I don't have a lot on my brush. It's just about the about the uh, bottom half up of dark brown. You can't see it on that brush, I know. And what we're going to do is try to create the illusion of what I was just saying about the one cross here being in front. And to do that, we're going to add some depth here. So on the left side of your cross, I want you to come straight down on the left side of the cross, I want you to have a darker brown and just come straight down. Just like this. Just your vertical cross. You're going to have it darker on the left than the right. Okay? And when you get that part, you're going to dip a corner of your brush, your half inch brush, dip the bottom corner in dark brown. This is when you're, if you want to do it like this, this is when you're going to add some kind of bumps and bruises to that cross. And see how I'm just kind of wiggling and jiggling a little bit? Not, not crazy. I don't want to go crazy. But just a few little bumps and bruises to the left hand side of that cross. So it's not all super smooth. As you're doing that, you're just going to kind of soften that center section, pull it down a little bit, move your brush back and forth, but you want to end up just like this. You want to end up, when you're looking at your cross, the left side of the vertical part is darker than the right side of your cross. And you wash your brush out. We're going to do the exact same thing, and it might be better if you turn it to the right. To yeah, turn it to the right. Turn your bottom of your canvas to the right. So you're looking at uh, the crossbar, right? And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to add the darker brown to your brush. And the bottom part, now this is the bottom part of your horizontal beam, is going to be dark. So we're doing basically the same thing we did to the vertical one, except we're doing it this way, this direction. I'm going to turn it around here in just a minute. And when you get that part, you're going to dip that corner again in the brown, right? And you're going to squiggle and wiggle that bottom part, just not the top, just the bottom part. So it doesn't look so perfectly straight if you want your cross that way. I'm going to turn around so you can see it now. You'll see the bottom part is darker and the left hand side is darker. have to let that dry a little bit and if it's still getting dry you're going to go over that first step again or actually a second step where you're darkening the left hand side and you're wiggling a little bit see how it's starting it's starting to take shape here where you're beginning to see a little bit of a difference. 
So we're going to take a little breather here a second, let you get caught up on that. This is a really important step here. And I want you to see this. You should end up, when you're looking at your cross, the left hand side of your vertical is darker than your right hand side of your cross. And the one, the crossbar that's across or, or horizontal, the bottom part of the wood is darker than the top. So in my case, I'm going to add just a little bit more darker to the bottom here. Because I just see kind of a little line and it needs to come up a little bit more. I want it to be maybe the bottom half or the bottom third of the wood to be darker. So wherever you need to be to make it darker right now, now is the time to do that. So you should end up with something similar to that right there. Kind of smooth that out in the middle if you want a little bit. So it's not quite a straight line. And you kind of have to do that before it dries. And you kind of blend that when it's wet. How are we doing, guys? Maybe we can go over uh, comments here while we're taking a quick break. Let you get caught up. Cheryl, I changed that scarf. That's probably what you meant. Thank you for noticing that. I kind of kind of redid that side there. Are we doing good, guys? Okay. I think we're ready to move on. Okay, we've got darker on the left and we've got darker on the bottom wood. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to add some highlight. This is uh, the shaded part, right? Uh, no, we're not doing highlight yet. Sorry, changing my mind on that one. We haven't completely finished the shading part. So if you notice on this one, it's darker on the left here, here, right? It's darker below, going across just like we thought. But it's also dark, and this is what's going to make that cross, the wood that's going across, that's going to help make it come forward, is behind it is darker. So right here is darker all the way across here, and up here is darker. So let's do that now. I'm still using my half-inch brush. And I'm dipping a little bit in the dark brown. And I'm, you can see I'm not using a whole lot of paint, actually. You can always add more paint. You can't always take it away quickly. So I'm taking my half inch brush and I'm touching, see where the cross is, I'm kind of going right above that and pulling up. Just touching and pulling up some brown. And then below it, I'm touching that bottom part and pulling down some brown. I'm going to wash my brush out and just kind of blend that down. I don't really want a line, but I want it darker right here and I want it darker right here. So kind of blend that out a little bit with your water. And it might need a couple of times, and so we're going to have to let that dry a little bit. But you should be able to see a darkness right here 
and the darkness right here. That's what we want. We don't want it dark all the way up here. We want it just right below the wood there. Top and bottom. need to add a little bit more darkness which I might do for myself because for you to see I want you to make sure that you see this add a little bit more dark if you need to maybe this is still the brown you'll see a little bit better now can't do it too soon. It's got to dry a little bit. You'll see it pulls up if you if you uh, do it incorrectly. There, you probably can see that a little better. Yeah. I'm just kind of pulling it back down so it doesn't have just a straight line. I mean a straight line. I don't want it to have just a straight line of brown. Straight line of brown. That's what it kind of looked like would. Okay. Now that's the uh, adding the shaded part of it, the little dark part. If you need to add any more dark, if it's not dark enough, now is the time to do that. Remember the cross, you want to cross is darker on the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more to that. You might have yours dark enough and that's great. That's great. Sometimes you have to reapply and I feel like I need to reapply so you can it will show up good for you guys to see. So in my painting right now, I'm I'm happy with this so far. I'm happy with it. I like my background okay. Uh, I especially like the uh, the way the cross looks right now. We are going to have to let this dry a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to add the highlights to it also. Uh, but before we add highlights, the section right here, and this is when I would get probably your round brush out now, if you have a small round brush. You see that? Or even if you have the liner, you might want to use that. So you need a smaller brush probably. You can do it with your half inch and just use the corner of your brush. If that's the only brush that you have, you can use that, that's fine. But whatever's gonna be uh, convenient for you. Right now, I'm gonna show you with this small round brush. You want to make your wood look darker on the inside here, kind of like how, uh, you know, knot holes are in wood. They're darker, right? Your wood around it is usually lighter and your knot holes are darker. That's the way this is going to be. As you can see here, See, inside is darker. Inside here is darker. And it's not just around it. It's, they're quite edgy because I want it to look like it had almost broke off. The wood is very rough. So let's get your dark brown. And this is going to be straight paint. It's not going to be a wash. It's going to be straight paint. So I dipped my round brush in the dark brown. And let's start at the top. And you're just going to fill in and just paint kind of squiggly, maybe some sharp, sharp edges, you know, pokey places, and do the center of that. If you need to add a little bit more paint to your brush, do the same thing on the sides. Wiggling around, wiggling and squiggling. 
There's no right or wrong, but now our cross is really going to start taking shape here. Use the left and the right sides. Mine's pretty rough. That's how I want it. You might want to do your smooth, or you might not even want to do that at all, but uh, I, I like it. So get that exactly the way you want it. it you want it darker. You want it straight paint. It comes down rough inside the wood, too, and outside. Side and outside. If you need it a little darker below your cross bar here, then go ahead and touch up a little bit of the ground. If you need to, while you've got some on your brush, just kind of dabble that around to get it darker. Really good guys. Yeah, Kathy. Hi Kathy, I'm glad you joined in. Okay, by now your cross should have some depth to it. You're gonna have lighter at the top, darker at the bottom, lighter on the right side of your vertical section darker on the left side. And like I said, if you need to add a little bit darker, uh, you know, areas, go ahead and kind of dabble that on. But the main thing is you don't want it to just create a dark line. You want to kind of smooth that out a little bit so where it's not just a dark brown line. You want to kind of smooth it. This is fun, guys. Glad you joined today. Okay. So if you've got your darkness inside here, you could even add, I didn't ask you to bring any black, but if you even want it darker, you could add a little bit of black in there too. But to me, the brown is just fine. We are getting ready to add some white to this to really make it pop. So... I'm going to go ahead and get my half inch brush, my handy half inch brush, and I'm dipping the corner, just the corner, in white. Kind of working it on my plate a little bit to knock off some of it. I don't want just a big old puddle on my brush, but just a uh, little bit. Okay, guys. So now it's kind of a mixture of your dark brown kind of your tan or your wash and now it's going to be some white. We want the white to be a highlight so it's all it's exactly the opposite of what we have been doing with the, the dark. So like we went dark on the left side now we're going to go light on the right side. So let's go ahead and we we still don't want just a streak of white. We want it to kind of be a soft white. And I'm just pulling it down on the right side of that cross. Don't get, don't get into your dark area here. Just get right underneath it and kind of pull down. You might need to add a little bit more paint to your brush. I did. You probably will too. Kind of pull down some the white. Keep loading your brush up as much as you need. Now we should be starting getting uh, the effect of the highlight part. It's going to start coming together now, guys. Once you have that on your right side, now we're going to do the opposite. And if you want to turn it, you can, or you can do it like this, whichever is convenient for you. 
you do it the same way. You dip your brush in the corner of the white in the top part of your cross. The one that goes across, you're going to highlight it. And you're going to use a little bit of white on your brush and just pull that across, all the way across. Except don't get into your dark sections. And honestly, if you actually, if your dark sections might still be a little bit damp and you pull in some of that and it kind of makes a tan color, no big deal. Look at your wood that you have. Wood is always, it has several variations of color. So this is the step we're at now. You should start to be able to see that this cross, this uh, wood across is in front of your vertical. Your horizontal wood is in front of your vertical wood. Now what I'm going to do next is wash my brush out and I am going to dampen it with some water, blot it on my towel, and get a tiny bit. I don't even know if you can see that. I don't have much on my brush. I'm kind of working it back. So I don't have a whole lot of white. And the idea of this is to come inside that cross just a little bit and bring some more white. And you can bring it on down here. It's not going to hurt that, that bad. So see how I've brought in a little bit more white. More towards the center of that cross. And just kind of work that while it's wet. Just kind of go up and down. Work it out the way you, you like it. You try not to make it a line, a straight line. And you try not to get it in that dark. And if you do, just wash your brush out like I just did and pull it back out. While it's still wet, you can use your brush to lift up that paint that you painted into the dark part. And you're just taking your brush and it's damp. It's not soft and wet and you're just kind of going back and forth and shading that and getting the right side of your cross lighter. just a little bit. It's not hard. It just takes a little bit of, of uh, kind of working that paint. And if you need to reapply some dark brown underneath, you go ahead and do it. Like I said, just paint. You're just kind of playing. Going right along. across the same way. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to my brush. Not a lot. I'm going across just a little bit more with the white and pulling it down towards the center. The center of that cross. The wood that goes across. Even if you have a few streaks in it, I think that's kind of cool too. You know, you have a few streaks that come over here and add a little streak of white in the kind of the middle of the cross. Do that a little bit. Just play with it. Just play with it. That's all we're doing is playing with paint. Make your cross the way you want to make the cross. There's not a right or wrong. There's only we're only having fun. Doing good, I hope. Okay. 
So we're to the point we definitely, definitely should be showing some dimension here. Now, if you notice right here, which I, for some reason I really love this part, although I'm not sure why. You know, we have it lighter on the right here, lighter up here, lighter at the top, the cross, right? But there's also a little bit of white here in the center, a little bit, a little bit over here. You know, it's kind of wherever you want to put it. But right underneath, you know, where we added the dark with our round brush here, and we added the dark right in this kind of part that looks like the inside of the wood. Can you, you notice right underneath that white? We need to do that, guys. So I'm going to take my half inch and dip in that corner a little bit of white. And I'm starting and I'm working my corner of my brush and I'm just kind of, kind of just uh, doing the same uh, squiggles and wiggles. that up a little bit. You see that? Just a little bit of white on the corner of my brush and I'm kind of moving it, wiggling it around. I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. Same corner, same white. I'm going to do the same thing over here. A little bit of wiggles right in front or actually I'm on the left side of the cross so it's right on the right side of the dark area it's on the wood part I'm going to do the same thing on the right side still wiggles add a little bit of white every little step you know you might question why is she doing this or why is this but when you get when you add these little steps, and if you just think about it, how much it really changes. See, look at this. Just by doing that, look how that really popped. That really popped. Really made a difference to that wood. That's why I like to teach you those little tips and tricks sometimes. You don't have to do them, but they make a difference. A little bit of soft white in there. Okay. Hopefully, you are now to the point where you like your cross. We've got the dark part. We've got the mid-tone. Remember, we started with the mid-tone, which was the wash or the light brown. We just washed it. And look how flat that looked. Remember how flat that looked? So we've just built and built and built. Then we added the darker part, two areas. Then we added the lighter white. And we finished off now with doing the highlights, some really good highlights. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to jump down here to the heel. And basically that's an easy peasy. We are going to, the way I did mine, I just painted it brown. Just brown. And then I just highlighted some with white, just kind of like the cross. The highlight was on the top of the heel here. So like the sun was coming, sun was shining down, you would want it lighter at the top of the heel, right? Maybe darker at the bottom part. So let's just kind of play with that a minute. It's similar to the cross, to be honest. So I'm going to take my half inch brush, I'm going to dip it in my brown, and add a little bit of water to it. I'm going to thin it out a little bit. I don't want it super, super dark yet. So I'm just going to thin it out, make a little puddle. And I am just going to base coat, meaning I'm just painting that heel. Now there again, I would recommend not just doing it straight, half circle. 
give it a little care. Make it wiggle and jiggle a little bit. You want some high places, you want some low places. Now my lines, remember I, I sketched this dark so you could see it. So mine's pretty, uh, you're going to probably see my pencil marks. But remember when you do sketch at the very first, just do it lightly. Just dark enough that you can see it. But I do mine darker so you can see it. So just kind of cover all of that. I cut it in kind of a, a light brown color. Going back and forth. Find the shape of the, the heel. Do it right up over the bottom part of that cross. Let that dry just a minute. Kind of fluff your paper or blow on it, whatever you would like to do. Then I'm going to take the same brush. I'm going to dip it back in my brown. A little darker now. Less water. And the bottom left side, I'm going to darken it. And I'm not doing no, nothing fancy. I'm just slopping that paint off. But the bottom left side and the bottom all the way across is just a little darker brown. I'm just going to go back and forth real quick. Don't, don't think about it. The main emphasis is the cross, not this. Not this. Okay. Shazam! We got it. It's just done. Now it's not completely done. But uh, you can play with this too uh, as much as you want. But while this is still a little damp, now I'm going to wash my brush out. I'm going to put my brush in the white. And at the top of my heel, I like it to be a little lighter. So if it's still damp, you should get kind of a, a light tan, you know, color. If it's not, if it's already dried up on you, then, uh, you know, add whatever colors that you want to it. Now mine is still a little damp, so the top of that heel is lighter. If I want it darker, I'm going to dip my brush back in the brown and just go over it. Okay, this is just playtime, guys. Playtime. You don't want it, I don't think you want it all the same color. That's kind of boring. You want to add a little bit of color. Right? So you want kind of a variation of colors. You want dark brown, you want some light brown, a little bit of white. And just play. Okay. I'm pretty good with that. How are you guys doing? Let me darken this around here at the bottom. Okay. See if that light lighter here at the top. You can add even more white if you want it. I would let it dry a little bit to see how it's going to dry before I would do that. And then uh, add your darkness here at the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is do our brass right here. Um, now you can use your liner brush here that you know, I told you. You can also use this half inch brush. I'm going to show you both ways how to do it. And that way you can see. And as you can see, the grass is in front a little bit of the cross. And it's off to the sides, each side. But it's at the top of the heel. So your medium green, I'll show you first what it's going to look like with a half inch brush. I'm going to dip. My paint got a little dry, so I'm going to open it. These lights kind of that I have going dry some paint quick. So I'm going to load my brush up in the green. And as you can see, there's not a lot. I don't have a lot of paint on there. I kind of want almost a dry brush. And you're going to take your brush. I'm going to touch the top of that heel and kind of pull up. 
just real quick. So you just kind of touch it and pull up. Touch it, pull up. Touch it, pull up. Now that's how that is going to look with a half inch brush. See, it's kind of soft. I like that. Let me show you what it's going to look like if you use your liner. I'm going to dip my liner brush in water. And I'm going to make a little puddle tiny here of my green off to the side. This is going to be more of a, uh, uh, let's see, which is cute too. And you can do both. See, it's it's more grass like this. Oops, wait a minute. Sorry. Get you in view here. Well, that's still not in view. There you go. Here's the half inch brush. Here's a little liner brush. Now you can do both also. Do the half inch brush first, or do a few of these really taller grasses, I guess I'd call it, say like that, which looks good also. So work on your grass a minute the way you would like, either your half inch brush or your liner or both. The main thing is make sure you add some grass to the front of that cross. You don't want that cross to, you, it kind of anchors the cross a little bit. Makes it look better. So you can do that. I like both. The original painting from last year, I just used the dry, uh, the uh, half inch brush, but I, I kind of like this, the both effect of it, the both brushes. That's up to you. Now there again, I don't want it, um, I don't want to overpower cross by grass. You could add, add flowers if you would like. Um, I'm, I'm not. I want my emphasis on the cross. How we doing guys? Yes, you can watch the replay for sure. Like I said, I will, uh, It'll take me a few minutes. I will upload it when we get finished uh, on my YouTube channel, Vicki Jean Wilson Art. Uh, also will be on my Facebook page. So you'll be able to view that, paint along with it later. Okay, how's the grass coming along, guys? Get me a drink here, and um, we can start on our purple here. As I told you, if you were on here, I am using a little bit different colors this time on my sample. I've got purple. This is a purple also, but it, I know it looks a little bit more blue, and it did have a little bit bluer tone for sure, but I'm using a deeper purple, and um, it's whatever that you have uh, to work with, right? But we're going to start on the purple robe here or cloth. And um, I'm going to let you either use your small round, which you can get a little bit easier in the corners, the tight places, or use your half inch, whatever you would like to use. And you're going to use the, uh, you're going to just load it up, load your brush up with paint. Mine's drying because of the lights. It dries pretty quick here. Load your brush up, and then it's just straight paint. It's not a wash, it's just straight paint. So just follow along.
and I want you to paint all of it, all of that template that you've got. Even where it looks like it's kind of opened up, paint that too. Be careful around your cross part because this is, we're uh, moving towards the end of this and Oh, I hope one of my little buddies just come in to see what's going on. Oh, they probably hear him on the bed. He's got a, we've got a bed here. In the, <laughs> got a bed in the studio for him to, <laughs> he's having a good time. I don't know if you can hear him or not, but he's scratching away. He's making his bed, getting ready to lay down a little bit. Greasy must still be outside. That's our dogs. Audie's the one scratching, making all kinds of noises right now. He's gonna try to uh, move to the back. You might need a couple of coats on this, kind of see what you're painting. It depends on the type of paint you've got, depends the quality of paint you've got. Well, this purple is awful pretty. In fact, I think I like it better than last year's color. Now, you want a little movement in your material. You don't want to just straight, I don't think you do. You can, I've seen that before, but you know, you can, but I kind of want a little bit of draping. So I've got a little movement, like I mentioned also with the uh, cross, just add a few little wiggles in your material so it's not just straight, straight. Now there's nothing wrong if you want it straight, but you know, I prefer a little movement in it. You also want to make sure that the top here looks like it's going behind the cross. So make sure you get that paint right up into that cross there, right next to it, to where it looks like that cloth is coming right wrapped around and kind of draping over. I've already got, well, Jennifer, thank you for joining. Yes, if you guys want to send me, uh, happy Easter to you too. If you guys want to, sh uh, when you get finished with your painting and uh, you want to uh, show me, go ahead and send it. Uh, and uh, I will post some of these and um, that's always fun to share, right? Always fun to share. Okay, you need to get that purple. You need to get that cloth uh, dry. So uh, you might want to do a couple of coats too to dry it real quick. You can either by, if you're using your mixed media paper, just kind of move it around. It'll dry fairly quick. If you've got a hair dryer, go ahead and use your hair dryer. Whatever you have. And uh, when we get it dry, we will go ahead and finish this part off. The center part, remember, is your glitter and that's optional, but that's always fun to do too. So we're about ready to finish up our robe here. So you probably will need, like I said, you might need a couple of coats, of whatever color you've got. Paint. Give it the, the right shade that you like.
I'm so thankful you guys joined me today. I appreciate it. I love I love, love when you join in. It is a beautiful day here, so I wasn't even sure if we'd have anybody on here because, of course, I know not everybody's from Indiana, but uh, it's pretty. It ended up being a pretty day today. leave a little bit of a uh, there's some uh, some streaking in here I kind of like that the way it is uh, of my purple let me get that a little closer and you might be able to see I don't know if you can see it or not it's still damp but just a little bit of a variation of the uh, color of purple in there and I kind of like that it's uh, kind of makes it look draped now, if you notice, this bottom left, right inside, is a little darker, right? Uh, kind of like the way we did this here in the wood, too. So it makes it look like it's kind of draped around. Uh, so that actually, the top part is all lighter, and that little section that was in the tracer is darker or the same color we've got here. So what we're going to do when this dries, we're going to add some lighter, either lighter purple, we're going to mix it, or a little bit of white, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a lighter purple and add some highlights at the top here. See at the very top, that looks like the sunshine's kind of uh, has uh, fell upon the top of this, so it's lighter. And then it gets maybe a little darker here. So let's mix the easiest way to do it, because if I tell you to do just straight white, I'm afraid you'll be unhappy with it. So whatever color that you used for the robe, you're going to take that color, pull off a little bit to the side, dip some white with your brush, and come over here and mix a lighter shade. You want a lighter shade. Now, depending on what shade you want, if you want that really deep, dark purple, then you're going to just barely, barely add some white to it. You're going to keep it basically the same, but you want a lighter shade of what you had on there. So you're just playing. You're just mixing your white and whatever color that you had your cloth and making it lighter. So isn't that a pretty... I want a little darker, I'm going to pull in more purple and just mix it there. I just usually just mix paints with my brush. Sometimes I use the palette knives, but in this case, it, I don't need a whole lot of paint. So I'm just doing it with my brush here. Okay, I've got that lighter color. See the lighter shade of purple on my brush? And see how it's lighter than this one? And what I'm going to do is paint come down to that little opening that's darker, leaving that darker, painting over that original purple. See what I did? Just like that. Now the other side, the top is lighter, right? So I'm doing the same thing. Except I might leave a few places that's dark. I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute. See right through here is a little dark. A little dark there. It's a little dark through there. The rest of it is lighter. Not a right or wrong, we're just you're just playing here, and you're just trying to get a little bit shade lighter on the top. If you need to add a little bit more white, go right ahead, pull it down. Okay, 
everybody's is going to look a little different because you've you've mixed your colors. It's going to look a little different. Just keep playing with it till you get the shape you like. The main thing is you want to have uh, some uh, dark and light running in that cloth. See how I've got a dark and a light there. And that's entirely up to you what shade you use. It depends on how much paint compared to white that you're going to use. But this way it looks you know, like this is the underneath side here. You can see right here the underneath side of the dark purple. That's what I first painted. And then I lightened my purple by adding some white to it. Made a highlight, highlight color all the way down through here, leaving some dark in places. Where it just looks like the material is draped over across. Make sure you get it right up next to that cross. So it looks like it's right, it's coming right behind. And if you need to take a more of a point of a brush to do that, go right ahead and do that. You want to make sure that it gets right there next to it. Just like we highlighted a little bit of the white here up next to the wood, we're going to do the same thing. That The purple that you've used, that you've highlighted, you're going to add a touch more white to that. So I've got a very light shade of white now. And right here, you're going to add a little bit of white shade, right where that, on the left side, Right here, a little light shade right there. If you want to anywhere over here, you can. I, I didn't, but uh, you can do that too. You can also do it with your half inch brush and soften it some if it's better, if it's easier for you to do. The main thing is you just want to show a little lighter color right there. And that really emphasizes, emphasizes the dark purple behind it. Okay. If you want to add a little bit more white to the very top of your material, then I would use a very thin white. And you've got to be kind of careful and touch on there and kind of pull it down. To the very top. And just kind of pull it down into that color. Very, very light. Very light. You might need to take your uh, brush and wash it out and then kind of go over that to smooth it too. And you're just kind of playing. Paint is still fairly wet. You won't be able to uh, shade too much if it's if it starts drying on you, but uh, you can add and play with this for a long time. If you had a uh, acrylic medium, you can do this even longer. But we're I didn't ask you to bring that, and if you have that, you can add that to your paint. It will extend the time that you can uh, kind of maneuver your paint a little bit, but. Uh, it, uh, uh, you, 
can do it with the water too. We are coming along good, guys. Isn't that pretty? That is Easter through and through, in my opinion. Gigi, you're thankful. You're thankful, and I'm thankful. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. And, Deb, I'm glad you like this. Thank you. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to mine. Now, like I said, if you have something like this, you have to add glue. I've got this little stickles, two little stickles. And uh, while it's dry uh, on my cross, I'm going to hopefully get this out of here maybe and just kind of wiggle it around a little bit. I can take uh, my brush and kind of brush it on. Isn't that pretty? I don't know if you, I'm going to uh, show you here in a minute what we got. I'll, I'll do it higher up so you can kind of see it closer to the monitor or the camera if you can see. But uh, I just, to me, I like it. And just do it kind of in the center area. I don't want to overkill. I don't want to do too much. Uh, but I like it. And that was just a tiny bit. Let me see if you can see it. Bring it up closer. Can you see that? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? Oh, golly. I just love that. Yes. So this is how you do purple sacrifice. Um, I hope you guys can see me now. I'm not sure what happened. I am so glad that it didn't finish off here. Um, I hope you can still see. Oh my Lord, I don't know what I think. Well, Cheryl, this is your first time. So, you know, I'm glad you joined because everybody has to start, right? Everybody has to start somewhere. I don't care what skill it is. So you started. That's the main thing, girl. That's the main thing. And I'm so glad that you came. Um, and uh, you guys, you can watch this again. And uh, also, like I said, I'm going to have it on YouTube a little bit later. It takes a few minutes to get it on there. And then um, it will also be on my page, which you can find. And Facebook kind of changes things around sometimes. So what you need to do uh, to go to my page, you go at the top. Now, it will show on my feed for a while. And then, you know, as things move down, it kind of changes. And then it will be up there. You go up to the menu part. And I think it says more now, and you click on the more, and it's a drop-down menu, and then it'll have videos. So all the videos that I've done uh, is on there. So that's one way that you can also uh, look at it, too. Uh, oh, your birthday gift. Well, happy birthday, Cheryl. Well, happy birthday to you. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've had a ball, of course, and uh, be watching the uh the group, the page, and uh, I will be doing some more too. And if you're ever interested, guys, I do have a painting membership. It's PJs and paintbrushes, and I will put that in the comment section too. Uh, it is uh, it's only 15 a month, and it's a very small group, but we have a lot of fun painting, and I give you uh, two tutorials a month. I run a skills where you learn some skills in there too. Uh, and then you have tracers. Sometimes it's so simple I don't send a tracer. Or if I want you to just practice your sketching, I don't send a tracer. But most of the time you have tracers too. So if you're interested in that, I will put that in the comment section also with this video. And um, I hope everybody has a blessed Easter season. It's coming upon us quickly, right? It will be here pretty soon. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this painting. I know I have. And like I said, this one, as well as many others, you can change it up how you want. But uh, practice it. You can re-watch the video, do it again if you like to. And um, uh, I, you know, every painting I do, I do is a little different. You can't, it's not assembly line work, right? It's hand done. And um, 
you know, each one of them is different. You can use the same template. You can look at the same picture, but they're all a little different. Now this year, like I said, I did use some different colors. The paints that I used last year, I couldn't find them. I probably used them, I'm sure. And I could have mixed some to, to match, but I thought, well, you know, I showed you guys kind of the bluish purple, and now I showed you a purple purple. So uh, you might want to change it up and, and do it different yourself. So anyway, thank you for joining me. And uh, make sure I am going to be doing some more uh, spring things. So be sure to follow the page and check back. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your Sunday. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, much love to you. And we will talk later. Bye-bye.